Could the Philadelphia 76ers trade for Pascal Siakam? The Sixers mentioned as a potential landing spot, according to reports. We're talking about that here on Philadelphia 76ers. Now by Chat Sports, I'm Chase Senior. Make sure you subscribe to the show for year-round Sixers content. I like Siakam as a player. If this were to ring true, I'm not sure it moves the needle that much depending on who Philadelphia would give up. And you have to think it would be a player like Tobias Harris and not James Harden. James Harden to Toronto doesn't make a lot of sense. But for Toronto, a team that's in that middle ground right now, they could be looking to just sell and pass up on this year and Harden and Tobias Harris, both on expiring contracts, I'll also say this about Toronto. Anytime that you think they're going to be a poorest team, they do such a great job of developing developing players and putting together assets to make them more feisty and competitive than what was originally anticipated, and they end up surprising a lot of people. Now, I like Siakam. When I've scouted him in years past, I think he's a very quality defender who's long, athletic, and will be bothersome for the opponent. His long arms can get in the way of passing lanes. He can block some shots. We've seen him D up Joel Embiid a couple of times, even though the weight advantage is not on his side. I also like his defensive versatility because of him being so long with the wingspan, but also his long legs and him being tall to begin with. He's able to really stay in front of guards. He can guard wings, but also stick with those bigs as well on that low block because he does have some toughness that I think Sixers fans would really like. He can put the ball on the floor a little bit, but his handle sometimes is just a little bit too loose in my opinion, and that can lead to turnovers and easy buckets going the other way. A few years ago, the three-point numbers were pretty solid, but as we're about to show you, the three-point game has fallen off a tad. Why I think it could work, though, familiarity with Nick Nurse. His best years over the last few have been with Nick Nurse. So Nick Nurse won a championship, obviously, in 2018-2019 after that quadruple bounce from Kawhi Leonard. 2018-2019 was his first season as a head coach in this league, and then after that, these are the last four years for Siakam when Nick Nurse has been the head coach. And he's had career year after career year after career year in each of these last four, thanks to Nick Nurse being on that sideline. So this gives you a glimpse as to what Siakam can bring to the table. And when I talk about that three-point game struggling a bit, 2019-2020, he was at almost 36%. The following year, under 30%. Not good. Two years ago, 34 and a half, and then this past year, 32%. So if we want to complain about Tobias Harris and him being somewhat inconsistent, not having big time moments, missing shots in critical junctures of ball games, you might have those same concerns with Pascal Siaka, but the production a little bit better. But what would the production look like playing alongside some other marquee scores that could be on this team in a James Harden, and if not him, Tyrese Maxey, as well as Joel Embiid. His shooting splits last year for Siakam. Let's look at them here because they are interesting. Inside the three-point arc, pretty efficient player, 48% on those twos. Outside of his three-point range, 32%. Now, I did take 18 field goals per night. I can't imagine those numbers would coincide with the Sixers' tenure for three-point attempts per night. So he's basically due for like a three, maybe more per game. So with that, let's tee up this question for the audience here. Who would you give up for Pascal Siakam? This will be our pinned comment. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, scroll on down, get those votes in and drop some names. Who would you give up for Pascal Siakam? Be the general manager and get in Daryl Morey's shoes right now. Start to take some of your questions here. Dark Army's with this one. I have been worried that Joel Embiid is going to request a trade because what happens if we lose him and who could we get back to fill up his roster spot? So a team like the Miami Heat could make some sense. And let's just say that Miami loses out on Damian Lillard. Does Jimmy Butler then go to Pat Riley and Eric Spolster and say, I want Joel Embiid as a consolation prize? Miami has some pretty intriguing assets. 
Tyler Hero, very good scorer in this league. The fact that Dan Lebetard said that he's better than Tyrese Maxey, cap, but he could give you 20, 25 points per game every single night. Can't play a lick of defense, but a pretty good score. And then Bam Adebayo, switchable defender, very good shot blocker, can handle the ball a little bit. I like the mid-range game. A good lob threat, too. Good playoff player with a lot of playoff experience. Those are the types of assets on top of draft capital that would at least move the needle for me a little bit. But Daryl Morey did talk with Joel Embiid after he made those comments to Maverick Carter, and Embiid told him, as well as Nick Nurse, I want to be a Philadelphia 76er. I'm not unhappy. I'm not going to request a trade. Next up, Mr. Awesome Guy 222. To truly build and win around Maxi, how much better of a defender would he have to become? So I'm actually confused by this because people think that Tyrese Maxi is an awful defender. I actually disagree. If you go back and look at what he did against Trey Young in that playoff series a few years ago, he defended Trey Young at a pretty good level. He's fast, quick feet, active. Against a player like Jason Tatum, yeah, we saw Tatum hit a couple of threes in his eye hole, but that's more so of a byproduct of Jason Tatum just having the size advantage over Tyrese Maxey. Him as a defender, what does he have to do to be better? Ideally, he'd be a little bit taller, but at 6'1", he can get taken advantage of by other larger wings and larger guards. I don't think he's a bad defender. I just think that sometimes the matchup is not on his side because he's a little bit shorter. Mahdi, was McDaniels a big L for Philly? I thought that losing him did hurt this team for sure. You traded away what ended up being, what, the 33rd overall pick in this year's draft as well as Matisse Thibel. So you lost a pretty valuable draft pick where you could have gotten a good player who could have played for this team this year on a very affordable deal, as well as Matisse Thibel. And then you lose those guys, and then you lose McDaniels as well, who I was confused as to why he was out of the playoff rotation. I thought he gave this team some pretty solid minutes. That comeback against the Milwaukee Bucks when Doc kind of sat Tobias Harris, and put, or was it P.J. Tucker, Tobias Harris? One of those two and McDaniels is on the floor, I thought that the Sixers played a pretty entertaining style of basketball. The three-point numbers, never that great, and that's a little bit of his downfall, but the Toronto Raptors are a smart organization, and they like to put together a lot of long, lengthy athletes. McDaniels fits that bill, and if they saw value in McDaniels, I think they think that he can be a solid rotation player, and just because you gave all that up for him, and you could have used that money elsewhere, it confused me. Also, this just really bothers me. The Sixers gave the same contract to Montrez Harrell that the Sacramento Kings gave Nerlens Noel. And Nerlens Noel, by far and away, the better player than Montrez Harrell, who I think is so far gone and cooked. Let's get to 12,000 subscribers right here on the show. We are 466 people away. Let's continue to grow this thing. Appreciate all of your support. Ryan Rowe, I am worried about five centers and developing more intangibles of starting Siakam and playing a balanced game, less turnovers, and a great defender. Um, I'm kind of confused by the question. I highly doubt that the Sixers will have five centers on the opening night roster. I just don't see how it's feasible in today's NBA. Daryl Morey did clap back at somebody, a reporter, I believe, who was saying... Like, Daryl, why are you bringing in all these centers? And Daryl tweeted back, like, why are you obsessed with centers? We're obsessed about centers because five centers on the team, when you have 15 roster spots, doesn't really make a lot of sense. For Siakam, he does have that balance game, does turn it over a little bit, is a very solid defender, though, Ryan. Tim Starr, would you rather make a big trade this year or get expiring contracts and go hard in free agency next year? At this point, I'm not sure what type of trade assets that you would be able to bring in. So then you look at next offseason when the free agency crops a little bit better and maybe you could get a better player via the trade market. And if you bring back Harden, you bring back Tobias Harris, that opens up about $70 plus million next offseason for the Sixers to use at their disposal. That's a lot of money to try to surround Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey with. Dark Army's with another one. Do you think if the Sixers got rid of Tobias Harris and added Zion Williamson with Embiid and Harden and P.J. Tucker and Maxey, do you like that lineup if you want to get rid of Tobias? 
I would take a chance on Zion Williamson. You're getting a young player with upside, and you're getting rid of Harris on an expiring deal. Would the New Orleans Pelicans ever take Harris for Zion unless they are just so tired of Zion barely playing, him reportedly not showing a lot of interest in developing a jump shot or a floater or doing the necessary things for him to be in shape? If they'd be willing to take Toby for Zion, yeah, I would try it out. The only issue is that Zion doesn't do anything to stretch the floor alongside Embiid. Sean, will the 76ers consider starting De'Anthony Melton if Harden is traded for a wing slash other pieces? Does that slide Maxi to point guard? It would give you a dual backcourt of ball handlers, and I do think that depending on what happens, De'Anthony Melton is capable of starting, and that could definitely be an option. And I like Melton as a player. I think he's one of the top like bench guards that you could have. Good two-way player. Very good defender. He could create at least a little bit. Has a solid three-point shot. Unfortunately, what was that? Game six and game seven grew a little bit cold against Boston. But I do like him. He's got that dog in him. Matthew, what about a hard for DeRozan trade straight up? At this point, I would do it. I think that DeRozan would be a good fit in that backcourt with Maxi. I'm kind of just tired of Harden's personality, the Harden antics, and him just never taking accountability and him trying to pout his way out of three organizations now. Parrish Fells, what happened to Mac McClung? He's a cheap option. It couldn't hurt. Yeah, so like Mac McClung, I, I think the, the point has become clear that a lot of teams don't think that he's an NBA player, had an opportunity with the Lakers, had an opportunity with the Warriors, Two well-run organizations, had an opportunity with the Sixers. He got his moment of fame in winning the dunk contest. I would give him a shot, maybe in preseason. I think he was like some type of restricted free agent or something along those lines. But in the preseason, I want to see what the dude can do. Not a great defender, three-point shot, really just okay. If you're still rocking with us, give me a real one down in the chat. That means that you made it this far, you like our content, and you're a fan of what we do, and you're a fan of the Sixers. Thanks for watching. It's 76ers now by Chat Sports.